We have talked about the neuroscience of the 1800s in the last two videos, but there's just a bit more to uncover. Something exciting was on the horizon for neuroscience at the end of the 1800s, but I won't spoil the surprise. Oh? You really want to know? I... I shouldn't. Okay, fine. In 1906, we saw the first neuroscience-related Nobel Prize. In the late 1890s, an Italian doctor named Camillo Golgi created a staining procedure for cells. Staining procedures for cells allow us to see all their tiny little cell parts under a microscope. The stain that Golgi created, now called the Golgi stain, used silver chromate to see all the tiny complex structures in neurons. Spanish neuroscientist Santiago Ramón y Cajal used the Golgi stain as well to look at neurons, which led to a very important discovery. If you can believe it, the whole brain being made of neurons thing hadn't actually been formalized or observed at this point in history, so when Cajal figured it out, his findings became known as the Neuron Doctrine. The Neuron Doctrine pretty much states that the nervous system is made up of discrete individual cells called neurons. For this discovery, in 1906, Cajal and Golgi shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. In 1898, a British scientist named John Newport Langley was pioneering theories on how neurons talk to each other and to the other cells that they connect with. He used the word autonomic to describe the nerves connecting to neurons in and around other body tissues like the organs. The autonomic nervous system is involved in regulating your internal organs and some of your bodily functions like breathing and heart rate and arousal for getting frisky time. Langley is also known as one of the fathers of chemical receptor theory, or the idea that cells have chemical receptors that can send biological signals when activated. Next, in 1899, a British doctor named Francis Gotch described the refractory period of neurons for the first time. When a neuron fires, it can't just fire again right away, it needs some time to reset. This was unknown before Gotch's experiments, and he also noted how these refractory periods can impact the muscles and the eyes. In Austria, Dr. Heinrich Obersteiner was busy researching the boundary between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, or CNS, is your main nervous system made up of your brain and your spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system, or PNS, are all of the nerves that branch off of the central nervous system. These innervate things like your skin and your organs. You get the idea. This boundary between the two nervous systems that Obersteiner was researching eventually became known as the redlich obersteiner zone. Finally, it was time for a neuroscience institute to form, so in 1887, Obersteiner started the Institute for Anatomy and Physiology of the Central Nervous System in Vienna. Specifically, it was a department in the Vienna School of Medicine, and it's actually still around today. In 1888, Obersteiner wrote one of the first books on neuroanatomy and neurophysiology. The Institute for Anatomy and Physiology of the Central Nervous System was attended by a man named Robert Barani. More like Robert Barani, am I right? Hey babe. Yeah? Was that funny? No. Nope. Okay, love you too. Robert Barani, this Austrian-Hungarian scientist, studied the physiology of the vestibular apparatus. This is the part of your inner ear involved with balancing, and it's where we get our sense of acceleration and gravity from. Issues with your vestibular apparatus can cause vertigo, or the sensation of spinning or dizziness when you're standing perfectly still. In 1914, Robert Barani was given the Nobel Prize, for his work, which meant that in the span of eight years, two neuroscience-related Nobel Prizes had been given out. That's it for this video, and we are done talking about the modern period of neuroscience. The next video will be our last in the History of Neuroscience series, and we'll be talking about neuroscience in the 20th century. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw and you want to see future videos that I make, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Take care of your brains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.